Pleasure to be here. Uh, I think really um, the, the, the marriage, as many are referring, uh, the, the, the union of uh, Steiner Institute and Drohinia Institute um, really has been phenomenal. And I really look forward to helping build the ocular oncology section and the Drohinia Institute uh, along with Tara. Um, so it'll be exciting. My particular interest is in the field of lymphoma. Tara is more the uh, m more common intraocular tumor melanoma uh, person. Um, I'm, I'm very much interested in melanoma. This interest, uh, lymphoma. This interest goes back to when I was at the Mayo Clinic. I used to collect all the cases of vitreoretinal lymphoma going back to the 70s, and those data were incorporated in some of the large studies, one of which I'll be um, talking about. Um, some of the things I'll be talking about toward the end of the uh, presentation are based on discussions with Sven DeVos, who is an associate professor of medicine in hematology and oncology and the head of the section of lymphoma at UCLA Medical Center. And he's a really forward-thinking, uh, um, well-known, um, internationally respected lymphoma uh, oncologist. And, and you'll see the importance of that later on. <laughs> um, my disclosure doesn't really relate to this talk. So vitreoretinal retino lymphoma is the lymphomas that we see inside the vitreous cavity. So from the Brooks, between the Brooks membrane and the endothelium of the, of the um, lens. There's another category called um, uveal lymphoma, which has an entirely different prognosis and, 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 and discussion. So this is going to be focused on the lymphoma when there's a lot of vitreous cell, when it's a masquerader for uveitis, or these um, lumps and bumps under the retina. It is a high-grade malignancy with a very poor prognosis. And it um, is usually considered a subset of the CNS lymphomas, which is also important. Is this a pointer? Oh. There, that one. Wait. Um, it's, it's considered to be a form of CNS lymphoma and is likely systemic and multicentric at presentation, which is, which is a modern thought. It used to be thought of, oh, if you see it in the eye, then it's only in the eye, and if, it goes somewhere, if you see it somewhere else later on, it metastasized there. And metastasis is probably the wrong concept when, when dealing with bloodborne cancers that are derived from hematopo hematopoietic cells. Um, and there are, there's some literature to that effect. Current therapies have very high relapse rates. Many, if not most, patients die of their vitreal lymphoma as soon as it shows up in the central nervous system. When seeing a patient, the kinds of things that should tip you off that this may be vitreal lymphoma are cells in clumps. Um, when you have a patient with uveitis, it's a very, very fine pattern of distribution of the vitreous cells. When it's a lymphoma, there's usually little aggregates of cells that are proliferating and therefore arranged in clumps. It can be mild cell or it can be severe cells, so severe that you can't even see the back of the eye. The retina may be involved, and may be cream-colored infiltrates within the retina as seen in this image, or maybe little white dots distributed very similar to like a Mutes-like fundus picture. And this patient actually was misdiagnosed uh, as a Mutes patient uh, before uh, we saw him. And sometimes there's overlying hemorrhages that make people confuse it with viral retinopathies. So it can be difficult to uh, diagnose, but if you keep these phenotypes in mind as always um, incorporating on the differential lymphoma, somewhere second or third, you'll probably not miss it. I'd like to share with you a case of a patient that I saw a little over a year ago. She just celebrated her one-year anniversary after treatment um, that, that really led to this new thinking that I will be talking to you about. It was a 50-year-old white female, a very type A, very, very involved in her care and wanted to know every little detail about everything, read up on everything, came back with more questions. And she's really the one that moved the needle of my thinking forward, as there often is like this index patient that makes, that the begins the new thinking that you may develop in a field. So she'd come in with progressive floaters. Um, she was referred in with a diagnosis of possible acute retinal necrosis syndrome, maybe lymphoma. It looked very much like acute retinal necrosis syndrome. Um, and her visual acuity was still pretty good, although she had a lot of vitreous cell. Here's a picture. So this whole area was all whitened, very similar to acute retinal necrosis syndrome, although it was not circumferential. And there was cell everywhere. And if you look carefully, there's all these subretinal deposits all the way going down here. And there's some vitreous cell. This looks black, but it's actually white vitreous cell. So the diagnosis of vitreal, lymph vitreal retinal lymphoma was established. If a tractomy was done, the diagnosis was confirmed. Um, un unfortunately, for, for the oncologist to treat the patient, 
uh, what, what Ben Glass was able to piece together, which was correct, and, and clearly the evidence was strong, was not enough for them to want to move on it. So we actually had to go back and do a choriretinal biopsy so that the hematopathologist would have enough tissue to firmly establish a diagnosis of large B-cell lymphoma um, that they would be able to act on. So, so I went in and, and, and excised the area of the lymphoma, and here's a post-operative picture. It was a little tiny piece of tissue, but in the eye, obviously, it looks like a huge piece was excised. But um, here's, here's the slide of the um, pathology, and you can see these are large B cells with very angry-looking uh, nuclei, and, and it had all the typical markers for a large B cell lymphoma with a very, very high proliferative index. So this is a bad B cell ordeal. So what are the treatment options according to the current literature? So there was a group um, that got together a report from the International CNS Lymphoma Collaborative Group Symposium. So a bunch of people got together that, that are so-called experts in their field and decided what should be the, the, the reference for what should be done in these situations. And they said, if one eye is involved, local therapy, either with intravitreal methotrexate or rituximab or uh, external beam radiation. If both eyes are involved, local therapy plus minus systemic chemotherapy and, and um, you know, and then and uh, only if the CNS is involved at, at initial presentation, in which case it's really technically definitely C CNS lymphoma, should you really treat with systemic um, lymph uh, treatment and also local therapy for vision saving. And with my experience with lymphoma and this patient pushing the boundary saying, you know, what, what is the survival? Why is it so bad? You know, isn't there something else? I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, we used to not use high-dose methotrexate. This definitely ushered in better survival rates, high-dose methotrexate-based chemotherapy protocols, but we're still doing relatively poorly. So, so I thought, well, wh what else can we do that's different? So let's first briefly look at the survivals b uh, in the past. So here's, here's a um, data, and this includes my collection of, from the Mayo Clinic in these 83 eyes. There's about 40 or 30, 38 patients from the Mayo Clinic that I contributed with Jose Polito in this um, project. And the overall survival is not very good. So the five-year survival comes in at about 50%. And then as you go on, people continue to die, even late deaths from this lymphoma. Um, and if they're treated with ocular therapy alone, or with systemic therapy, doesn't make much difference. This is not significantly different, those two lines. Another study looked at um, the, the you know, extensive treatment, which was systemic treatment with whole brain radiation or not, ocular treatment, um, ocular treatment, ocular and uh, systemic treatment. And there was no difference in survival, regardless how you treated it. So our current chemotherapy protocols that were used up until these publications were inadequate to make any difference whatsoever, and that's what those recommendations were based on. So then the question is, you know, what can we do differently? All right. So we, cause, because we haven't been doing very well, the treatment makes very little difference, and this was shown in the two largest collections of vitreoretinal lymphoma uh, publications that I just showed you. Those are the largest publications uh, to date. So recurrent vitreoretinal lymphoma in the CNS is very poor prognosis and has usually resistant to chemotherapy or relatives of resistance. So when you s apply salvage therapy, once it shows up in the CNS and people are now getting close to death, the treatments don't work that well. So since, since vitreal lymphoma is considered a subset of uh, CNS lymphoma, what are the people doing that treat CNS lymphoma? Should we be treating the primary ocular lymphomas just like they're treating CNS lymphoma since they have, since they're really considered uh, siblings, if not, if not versions of the same? And all the treatments for CNS lymphoma through um, from 1975 to 1999 are summarized in a, in a, in a very large study with 1,500 patients included, and their five-year survival is about 20%. And this is up until, um, like I said, until about 1999. And so the bar in CNS lymphoma world was getting better than 20% 20 20 five-year survival. And what did they do? They tried methotrexate-based chemotherapies, all sorts of things, but the real jump that's occurring right now is they're gone to autologous stem cell transplantation um, as a primary therapy, which used to be and was pioneered as a rescue therapy. 
And with this approach, and here's, a, here's a, um, an algorithm of, of, of one person who, Ferrari is one of the advocates and one of the people that's pushing the envelope on this for CNS lymphoma. And basically, if people are healthy enough and everything looks like everything's going to go well, they go to autologous stem cell transplantation. And how do they do? My slides are not coming through very nicely. So here's, here's an example where primary CNS lymphoma, 16 patients versus secondary CNS lymphoma, they had a 100% survival rate over five years in the primary CNS lymphoma compared to the, um, th so this is overall survival compared to the secondary uh, um, CNS lymphoma. Where they, where they did lose some, but they did much better than 20% survival at five years uh, with this autologous stem cell transplantation. And here's another study of primary um, diffuse B cell lymphoma with stem cell transplant with a 64% survival at, at five years. So there's some variation between the studies, but it's definitely much, much better than 20% survival at five years, which, was, which is a historical bar that, that everybody has to beat. And then here's uh, another study. Um, another study looking at overall survival in two subsets of patients. Part of the same study, they're on a very similar protocol. They changed the protocol slightly so they report the data differently, but they, they, they got about a 50% um, survival at um, 96 months. What's that? That's uh, seven or eight years. So, so doing much better than before. So then the question is, so since our, cur for, since our current therapies for vitro th lymphoma are inadequate, and there are many new treatments on the horizon that are, that are more targeted, but what can we do in the meantime? So the CNS lymphoma folks are doing autologous stem cell transplantation as a primary therapy, and um, that's relatively new. In, for ocular lymphoma, it is used as a rescue therapy once people develop CNS lesions, but they don't do that well, even with that. So why not explore primary stem cell transplantation for vitroretinal lymphoma? Um, so we discussed this with our patient, and, and Sven de Vos, um, who I because I, I called him up after talking to the patient, thinking about it, I said, you know, we're not doing that much better than we used to. We need to do something new. I looked at the literature, I found this information I just showed you, and I called him up and I said, can we just do a primary stem cell transplant, like what is being done in CNS lymphoma now? And he thought, well, that's actually a really good idea, because no matter what we do with the vitreotin lymphomas, when they come back, they just don't do well. So this patient was very amendable. She was willing to... Um, take the leap. She knew she's the first patient that ever in the world will have a primary um, stem cell transplant for lymphoma. And she underwent four cycles of chemotherapy with methotrexate, rituximab, and leucovorin rescue, um, and then two cycles, rituximab, ERC, thiotipa, uh, intraocular methotrexate during these cycles. And we, even though she only had disease in her left eye, we injected both eyes with met methotrexate because we didn't want to leave any areas untreated during the chemotherapy because we really tried to treat the whole body. And um, then she had the uh, stem cell transplant. So far, we've done two patients. Um, Sven is doing another patient right now from um, an external source that, that wasn't in the ophthalmology department at UCLA uh, diagnosed. Um, so, so we are hoping to pioneer this, and are hoping it'll be a much better treatment and have similar improvements in overall survival as has been seen in the uh, CNS uh, disease uh, literature. The problem with it is, unfortunately, that um, you know, it does have a high morbidity, but how compared to the high mortality of the CNS lymphoma itself, it is a reasonably um, good treatment. My motto always is when I, when, I, when I manage patients, in the absence of a good treatment, less good options become reasonable alternatives um, with regard to risk profile. When we know this is not a good treatment, well, what, what, what is something else that we don't know so much about that probably isn't any worse than what we already know is not good, that we can try to do better. And this, is, this represents this kind of th um, path of thinking. So now we are pioneering at UCLA this approach uh, to autologous stem cell transplantation. Thank you.